welcome to service 61 for the 22nd of May 2022. Uh, today we're considering almost the last part of the Bible. We're just in the, the second last page in Revelations and we're thinking about the new Jerusalem. First of all we'll have a song and as usual the lyrics and the chords are in the video description. took control of me, and the angel carried me to the top of a very high mountain. He showed me Jerusalem, the holy city, coming down out of heaven from God, and shining with the glory of God. I did not see the temple in the, in the city, because its temple is the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb. The city has no need of the sun or the moon to shine on it, because the glory of God shines on it and the Lamb is its lamp. The peoples of the world will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their wealth into it. The gates of the city will stand open all day. They will never be closed, because there will be no night there. The greatness and the wealth of the nations will be brought into the city, but nothing that is impure will enter the city nor anyone who does shameful things or tells lies. Only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of the Living will enter the city. The angel also showed me the river of the water of life, sparkling like crystal, and coming from the throne of God and of the Lamb, and flowing down the middle of the city's street. On each side of the river was the tree of life, which bears fruit twelve times a year, once each month, and its leaves are for the healing of the nations. Nothing that is under God's curse will be found in the city. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, 
and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be written on their foreheads. There shall be no more night, and they will not need lamps or sunlight, because the Lord God will be their light, and they will rule as kings for ever and ever. But nothing that is impure will enter the city, nor anyone who does shameful things or tell lies. Only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of the Living will enter the city. So the question is, are we fit for heaven? And you'll note, I include myself in that, not taking anything for granted. Are we actually fit for heaven? What is required? Is utter perfection required? Well, thankfully, no. At the other extreme, can we get away with murder? Again, the answer is no. You see, when the Lord Jesus died on the cross, well, he paid for the sins of mankind. And the old picture is it's like getting a even given a cheque. Cheque for a million pounds. Very nice. But um, you can't actually spend anything until you've taken the cheque to the bank. Cashed it in. Ah. And, and mankind is in that situation where every human being on earth has been sent a cheque. Salvation is free. It's yours just for the asking. But you've got to ask. Hey, you've got to ask Jesus into your life. You've got to invite him to be your Lord, your Master. Ah, you can't just, ah, oh, well, maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't. Now, Jesus had uh, harsh words to say about people who were lukewarm. He'd rather you were hot or cold. Well, The folk of the church, of course, have, theoretically, all accepted salvation. But I do say theoretically, because we have to bear in mind the parable of the sower. And there are various groups represented in that par parable. Remember that the farmer goes out and he he's sowing his seed. Some of it lands in the path, well that comes to nothing. The birds are eat it up right away. Some of it lands in stony ground. Well, it grows, but not very well. It shoots up. It's got no deep roots. And when troubles come, nah, they flee away. And some lands in good soil, and that produces a great harvest. Well, hopefully we are in the great harvest section of that particular parable. And those are the folk that are going to get into heaven. Uh, there's no place for what I call churchianity. I invented that word. I'm quite proud of that word. Churchianity, that's where you have the appearance of being a Christian. You know all the words to all the songs and you're at all the meetings and oh, you can pray such wonderful sounding prayers, but in your heart, you're a rebel. You're still an independent soul, independent of Christ. That's churchianity. And, well, this new Jerusalem has no place for such a thing. Now, what else do we have in here? Well, one of the things that, that, that struck me when we're talking about things that are impure, how do we define that? Well, we define it from what's given to us in the scriptures. Uh, we do have to make slight differences between what's purely Jewish and what is Christian. Um, there are a few things. Obviously there's the dietary things. Um, but we do have to be slightly you know, cautious about that. And the thing we need to bear in mind is that the morality of the world around us, well it wobbles, doesn't it? It wobbles. From one century to the next, 
something that's perfectly acceptable in one century, the next century. Oh no, nobody wants to know it. And then, oh, maybe a couple of centuries down the road, here it comes back again. Whatever it happens to be. So we don't pin our ideas of what's good and just on the particular teachings of the press, the media, uh, the the religious authorities even sometimes they can they, they can go uh, well yeah they've been known to go off the rails haven't they you stick to the book the book the book and nothing but the book we're talking about those whose names were written in the Lamb's Book of Life now this is a thing we call uh, election in, in the church that you're chosen you're chosen before time earlier though in Revelations uh, at the end of one of the letters in the, the, the first couple of chapters Jesus says that to those that win the victory I will not erase their names from the book of life well that means to be in the book of life you actually just have to be alive but if you screw up you ignore the offer of salvation. You deny the Holy Spirit, and that's the one unforgivable sin. Then your name is erased from the book of life. We don't want that. That is a bad thing. So can your salvation be lost? How far would you have to push it? I think it can actually be lost because there's falling into sin. That's an involuntary thing. You fall in love, not that I'm saying love is sin, but that's something you can't help. You can't help falling in love. But you then run off with, leap into bed with, commit adultery with. Well, those are all voluntary things. <laughs> yes, you knew what you were doing, sunshine. <clears throat> so, no, you can't help falling into sin. But it's what you do thereafter, right? If you deliberately decided, oh, God's grace gives me the chance to do absolutely anything. Well, I think I'll go out and... And then comes a list of... Horrible, horrible things. No, that's taken a loan of it. And you're not going to get forgiven for that lot of sunshine. No, 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 no. There's another place for people like you. And Jesus was not kind to hypocrites. And that's what you would be. You would be a hypocrite. What if someone dies young? Is that possible? They die before they've realised that they're chosen, that they even know about Jesus. What happens there? I'm not sure, but I'll give you a wee example. About 50 years ago, I'm sitting in a Ford Anglia. At the traffic lights at the end of Kelvin Way in Glasgow. And that's just under that great big tree on the left where that flower tub is now. Yes, things have changed in 50 years. It was a, a four-lane road back in the day. So I'm sitting in the left-hand lane in my Ford Anglia, waiting for the lights to change. They change to green, obviously. And then a strange thing happens. I'm sitting there and my brain is all fuddled. And I'm thinking to myself, does green mean stop or, or, or does green mean go? Yeah, yes, I, I had actually passed my test, admittedly at the third attempt, but <clears throat> that's another story. And as I'm trying to work this out in my poor little brain, an Austin Cambridge passes me in the, the right-hand lane, we Brits drive on the left. And as he's in the middle of the crossing, a rover 2000 comes through the red light to his right and wallop. 
and the Austin Cambridge are pretty hefty car, does a 360 degree spin, not just 180, it did a full 360 and came to a, obviously a grinding halt in the Rover 2000. Well, yes, it was stopped dead in its tracks. Now, if my little Ford Anglia had been in there, I would have got hit. And actually, well, yes, <laughs> you wouldn't be sitting listening to me now, would you? <laughs> no. But does, yeah, the, the Lord gave me a warning before I knew the Lord. Does that mean my salvation couldn't be lost or I was chosen? Had I got killed in that incident, would I have found myself in heaven? Well, I believe I would. I believe I would have found myself in heaven. Once you belong to the Lord, you always belong to the Lord. And the Lord is not stuck in time. The Lord is eternal. Now let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and evermore. Amen. Church of God, worship as one body, joined in heart and soul and mind, one in Christ our Lord. Though we come from many lands, every tribe and nation, here we pray that by your hands we shall be as one. Here we are, the Church of God, worship as one body, joined in heart and soul and mind, one in Christ our Lord. Different are the gifts we share, yet one Lord we're serving. He is risen from the grave, Jesus is our Lord. Here we are, the Church of God, worship as one body, joined in heart and soul and mind, one in Christ our Lord. In the age of pride and sin, Jesus is still reigning, is the victory to win, Christ will overcome. Here we are, the Church of God, worship as one body, joined in heart and soul and mind, one in Christ our Lord. Though we come from many lands, every tribe and nation, here we pray that by your hands we shall be as one. Here we are, the Church of God, worship as one body, joined in heart and soul and mind, one in Christ our Lord. Here we are, the Church of God, worship as one body, joined in heart and soul and mind, one in Christ.